How did the, the idea come from you, for you guys to come to Texas? Uh, man, it really came from uh, mostly dad, like his record collection and all the shit we were listening to growing up. Like we always listened to, um, you know, Guy Clark and Robert Earl and Rodney Crowell and Steve Earl and a lot of that stuff. Like all these guys that, like when we were starting our own thing, guys that were r really heavy influences on us. So Robert took you under his wing right away. I remember yeah, being je early. almost jealous because I was like, God dang, man. Right. Well, I mean, he loves these guys. Robert did, like, I would say about a year or so, or maybe a year or two into it. Like, Chris immediately, like, the way we first moved to town, Cody called Chris. Um, and, uh, like, I, we were living in an attic <laughs> in South Austin above the house that we would eventually move into. But like for the first six or, I don't know, five or six weeks, we were living in an attic. <laughs> Y'all had to move down to move up. For 200 <laughs> bucks, we lived in somebody's attic when we first got to town. With a V. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like had all our shit piled up on the A frame. The <laughs> you had to walk in the <laughs> <Yeah>. middle. <laughs> that, those, those Lucy shows, like that's, that set it off. Like all of a sudden, it was kind of like, I don't even know why, but it was the place to be on Monday nights, you know? But, and, well, yeah. And the word started getting around. It was back in those days when like the Chronicle would say something and people would pay attention to it, or like Chris Wall would tell Bruce Robeson and he would tell somebody else. And, you know, all of a sudden there was like this thing mm -hmm. that we had like for, I don't know, two or three years, like Lucy's Monday nights was. So our classic Reckless Kelly, like our first huge, terrible mistake really, as far as like <laughs> business goes, like we made a record at Arlen with this producer, a guy from Austin. Right. And uh wasn't really a producer, but like we met him. He was like, oh, this guy's got a really nice van and yeah, <laughs> he man. wants to produce the record type of thing. He's so, going to let us do it for 20 grand up front. Yeah, so we went and did this record and all of a sudden we owe Arlen like 10 grand and we don't have that kind of dough at all. I mean, we can't even pay rent. And, uh, but we had a decent record, but was recorded out of phase. So Chris came in, paid off the studio bills, picked up the record, put it on his label and had Merle Brigante, uh, a great producer from here in town who yeah. produced some of Chris's shit. Um, he came in and remixed it, uh, at his place. That is, that's what I mean, man. And How so cool that was, is that? That's Millican. And that's our first record. And, and it wouldn't have come out like. I don't know. We probably would have figured a way to to figure it out, but like Milliken was all about Chris. Like he he made that record happen, like big time. Like that came in and was just like, I got a few bucks. You kids seem all right, so let's let's fix this. And then he put us on his label and and put it out. And that's when things really started moving. Over the last year, man, what have you been doing? Like where have you where'd you hang out during the pandemic? The pandemic. I was up in Idaho the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. It was great. I came back to Austin twice between March of 2020 and when we started back on the road. Like I came back for a couple of weeks twice just for, I can't even remember why. Like, like I just stayed up there because it's a perfect place to hide out. Like, Were you at your parents' house or? No, I've got my own place out there and it's in the middle of nowhere. Like it's like literally like nobody around. I, Mickey and Gary have places right next to me. And uh, it's in the middle of our county. It's the, the second or third largest county.